we would take a look at the Bisa Aberwa launch. And so renowned African award-winning filmmaker and historian Kwao Ansa says preserving and promoting African values and history of the black race are the surest ways of handing down traditions, values, and customs from one generation to another. Our reporter Nana Kweku Idria uh, spent time with the Pan-Africanist at his state of the art Bisabrewa Museum in Takradi in the Western region. Take a good look at this. Located at Nkontumpo, a suburb of Sekendi Takradi in the Western region, the Bisa Aberwa Museum houses one of the world's largest private collections of artifacts, sculptures, and audiovisual representations of the African story. The Pan African Museum was created to be one of the largest sculptural representations in clay, wood, cement, paintings, and photographs of personalities whose sacrifices have shaped African history both within the continent and the diaspora. It has about 2,200 artifacts, sculptural pieces, and photographs of heroes of the African struggle and the African-American civil rights movement, as well as other black personalities in the French, Portuguese, and Spanish Caribbean. The facility, the brainchild of renowned African award-winning filmmaker and historian Kwao Ansa is dedicated to preserving the history of the black race, promoting African values, and celebrating Pan-African heroes. Everything about us has been changed to benefit other people's interests. For instance, you could see uh, the crucified black Jesus, and the narrative is Leonardo da Vinci, why change my image into yours? Where is my Madonna and child? You know. Then let me show you something. Because how many Ghanaians or Africans would believe that Jesus Christ was black? No, they wouldn't. And here you are, let me show you. These are one of the old uh, the Madonna and child. The true Madonna and child. You see, Pope Benedict and Pope Francis kneeling before the black Madonna and child at the inner sanctum of the Basilica. So how come they come out to disgrace us and liken us to Lucifer or Abwansam? You see? So it was an orchestrated scheme. Scheme. Against you make us feel inferior, you know, and we've accepted it. The specimens on display capture events within the slave dungeons in Africa, the tolls of the Africans on the slave plantations. Our forefathers, or yes, our forefathers who were taken into slavery, they were maltreated, they were lynched, they were killed, they were maimed. There's, there's something, if you can walk for you to tell us one more thing. You've really portrayed them properly uh, here, where uh, some were being whipped, somebody in, a, in a, uh, like a Roman father, or I should say a priest, I should put it that way, what exactly? What exactly? What is it? They are Ku Klux Klan. These were people who came together, formed groups just to maltreat the black person. To them, black people were not human beings. They treated their dogs better than the black people. As you could see here, some of these people attempted to escape. And when they were caught, they were lynched. You could see even babies being lynched at the feet of their parents. And uh, these are slaves they bring to come and observe so that they don't repeat what their relatives did. The museum 
is a product of collections started about 40 years ago with the main purpose of allowing generations of Ghanaians to know more about the past so that they could make informed decisions. The paramount chief of Isikado traditional area, Nana Kobinanketia V, is vice chairman of the board of trustees of Bisa Aberwa Museum. Most of us don't know what is meant by being African. And when you come here, you realize who you are and the lost knowledge. And without knowing who you are, you'll be mentally enslaved. So here is to remind us of the struggle that we are now in. In this year of return, that is the period that we are in to liberate ourselves mentally from imperial doctrines, Eurocentricism, and all these things. It's a return to ourselves and to our own value system. The facility is also expected to serve as a conduit for handing down traditions, values, and customs from one generation to another in Ghana and Africa. I started uh, as a textile designer. You know, I've gone into so many areas, set designing, you name it, film director and whatnot. This is going to be the ultimate. Yeah, this is going to be the ultimate. And uh, uh, I'm happy I'm part of the education because I myself, I myself, have been affected so much by this education, self-doubt <laughs> education, and uh, eventually I'm, I'm happy I've realized I'm God's creation, you know, and God is not that wicked to create, you know, a man that will be below, below his standards. Clearly, uh, we've, we've been educated on most of what we've been losing over the years in terms of our culture and our history especially. And uh, Nana Eko uh, Ansa has explained everything to us. This museum is, is a grand museum uh, and this is where we all have to be to learn about our history. And probably uh, the brothers and sisters who are coming from the diaspora, if you are in the country and you want to know more about the history and about your forefathers. This is a place to be, to learn about your race and yourself. Very insightful indeed, and I do encourage everyone to uh, pass through the museum to learn a thing or two about their history as well, because you can only benefit from it if you get the information for yourself and go through the hub for yourself.